Edition's exclusive paper autumn orchard. This one's a very vibrant fall paper that just has some really neat colors and, and things in it that you don't always see in the fall. So, what I have done is I've done a fall shaker banner. So, I will link below in the description of the uh, Cricut file so that you can cut these little pumpkin shakers for the ends and we'll also cut your letters that go with this and the frame for the bigger shaker pieces. Um, this goes together super fast. I did, with the exception of the fussy cutting, I did do a lot of fussy cutting. Um, you'll see some of that in the video. I didn't end up using everything that I fussy cut, but I did use a lot of it. So, um, let's get going. Okay, so the first thing I did was just kind of go through the paper collection and decide which papers I might want to use on the banner. Um, and then I selected larger images to fussy cut to add as decoration on the banner. At this point, I didn't have a total plan. I wasn't sure what size my banner pieces were going to end up being. Um, so I ended up fussy cutting quite a few things that I didn't actually end up using and the ones that I did use I did end up trimming down. So I used the little truck. I did these adorable sunflowers from one of the other sheets and then I ended up fussy cutting the, um, the little house and the hay bales and stuff off the bottom of this and then ended up not using them. Okay, yeah, so this was the tail end of the fussy cutting of the two elements that I did not use um, were, was this little house, or the little barn in the scarecrow. Um, and then I ended up fussy cutting the leaves off of the top of the other sheet that the truck came off of the bottom of this one. Um, these are the ones I did end up using. I did split it in half and use half on the two center pieces of the banner. Um, and then those big sunflowers I did use on the very first piece. So uh, just about done with that and we can get on to assembling our shaker. Okay, so for the shaker, <clears throat> you're gonna have one piece of lightweight chipboard one piece of brown, one orange. Those are going to go on either side of the ch lightweight chipboard. You're going to have a little stack of greenery pieces, and then you're going to have your main shaker piece and your um, acetate. So what I ended up doing, rather than gluing or taping, I have sticky dots, and these are available in the store at Country Craft Creations, both in this four and a half by five, or roughly, um, like card front size, and there are also eight and a half by 11 sheets. I have the eight and a half by 11. I couldn't find them to save my life. I don't know where I stuck them when I was cleaning last time. So I'm peel, I peel off the backer piece. I'm laying that down using that cover sheet to kind of put over that and burnish down. And then I'm going to very carefully peel this up. And when I peel this up, any of the little sticky dots on that sheet, not that you can see them, they're there, will stick to my pumpkin. So I'm laying this now with the other half. This is where, like I said, the eight and a half by 11 would have been ideal, but I couldn't find them. I'm actually hanging this off the edge of my mat so it doesn't stick to my glass mat and then just putting that carrier sheet over, burnishing down again, and then I'm gonna pull the carrier sheet off, carefully peel this off of the sticky dots and then put the carrier sheet back on and there's still plenty of stickiness on there for something else. So now I'm going to take that that topper piece 
I'm gonna lay it on my acetate. And I've got the acetate on that brown cardstock, hoping that maybe you would be able to see it better. better. And clearly that didn't work, so here we are. Okay, so I've stuck that to the acetate. It sticks down perfectly. We don't have to fight with tape backing. We don't have to fight with glue. It just works. Of course, if you don't have those, glue works. Score tape works. You know, whatever you may have. So what I'm gonna do is clean this with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. So the rubbing alcohol will get, like if you do have to use glue, it will get glue marks off of the acetate. It also cleans the acetate and supposedly, and I think it does actually work, this is the first time I've actually tried it, um, it helps cut down on the staticiness of the acetate. Um, because you'll notice when, when I do the banner pieces, I did not do that and I had sequins like sticking like crazy. So, okay, so I'm gonna glue my orange piece, the light orange, There's, I've got two different shades of orange here. Um, I'm gonna glue this lighter orange piece onto the top of the lightweight chipboard. All of this, of course, was cut with the Cricut, um, and the file for that is linked down below. <clears throat> And I'm going to lay that down on top of the lightweight chipboard. And I was fairly generous with the glue, so I have a minute here where I can kind of slide things and line up and make sure everything's lined up the way I want it. And part of the reason that we're going to do, go ahead and cover the back, even though nobody's going to see it, is, is two reasons. One is to help reinforce some of those little tiny vine pieces that are sticking up there just to give them a little bit more strength and two just because I figured out after I cut those and a couple other pieces that I really needed to change the blade in my Cricut <laughs> so I had some stuff on the lightweight chipboard setting that didn't totally cut through and you can kind of see where there's like lighter patches on that chipboard because it like decided to separate. So we're going to back it with some more brown artisan um, and that, like I said, we'll kind of cover that up and it will also serve to reinforce um, those little tiny vine pieces up there at the top. So I'm going to line that up on the back and it lines up just perfectly, super easy to do. Gonna wipe some of the extra glue off. Okay, we're gonna flip that back over and then we are gonna glue on our greenery. So when you're doing this, you're gonna have three pieces, two little tiny stems, and then there's gonna be another like bigger, fairly simple stem, there we go. Those are gonna go on the shaker top. All of these little more kind of intricate looking leaves are gonna go on the base because all of those little leaf pieces stick out from behind the shaker top. So it gives it kind of an extra dimension to the shaker when it's, when it's finished. Okay. So I'm getting those attached down. And of course, if you leave them on your Cricut mat, if you cut your green pieces very, very last, it'll make yourself make things a lot easier because you can look at the way they are on the, um, the cutting mat and see where they go as opposed to I cut my two sets because you will do this twice. You'll, you'll cut this, all of this stuff twice. So you have the two shakers. Um, I think it was the second piece I cut, so I pulled all the pieces off and like put them in two piles, you know, one for one side, one for the other. Not thinking that, you know, a couple of these might be kind of weird to try to line up after the fact. So just a tip there so you don't confuse yourself like I did, but it's okay. You'll figure it out. If nothing else, before you put glue on them, just kind of lay them on there, figure out where they go, and then just pick them up and glue them down like one at a time. Making sure that one's turned the right direction. That little tiny one goes down in that corner. And you end up at, with, at the end of this with a shaker that's really got some dimension and, and is a little bit different probably than most of them I've done with you guys. 
and that's always kind of fun. So I'm going to glue the last little green piece down on the base. And these will line up exactly over um, the orange, like where they go on the orange. So now you've got your two tiny stems and then your one larger stem with the vine that go on the top. So we're just going to glue those to the shaker top. And the last one. Okay. So I'm going to put the lid on my glue, set that aside. Now we're going to turn this over and we're going to do our foam tape. So I am using the black foam tape strips. These are available in the store. These are about an eighth of an inch wide. They're fabulous. I, they come in black and white. I am using black for this. Um, I'm going to use a normal white foam tape later on. And what I found is they're kind of stuck together. Like they're cut, but they're still stuck together. So what I found is if I take my craft knife and I just very gently kind of stick it between the rows, and you'll be able to see on a sheet of these where those rows are. In fact, you can kind of see it there when the light hits it just right. Um, it just makes them easier to pull up. So you, even though there's not like anything with the shaker window underneath those stems, you do still need to put um, foam tape on those stems just so they don't collapse down when you put this top onto your shaker base. So um, I am just bending these around and they do bend because they're so thin, they do bend really, really easily. Um, so I'm just taking one strip at a time, laying it down, and then just using one fingernail to kind of guide it as I push it down, you know, and help to turn it and, and bend it around the different um, edges of the pumpkin. Now, if you wanted to get really crazy and if you're good at putting that back piece on your shaker and getting it lined up right um, from the other side, which I am not, which is why I always put the shaker filled down and then put the topper on top of it, um, you could uh, go through and put foam tape on each one of those, um, lines on the pumpkins themselves and make this and make each one its own separate section or its own separate, make each pumpkin separate. I didn't want to get that fancy with it, but it would look amazing if you wanted to do that. Okay. So we're still just, I'm just double checking to make sure I haven't misaligned something where you can see it from the other side. So far, we're good there. And just continuing around. And this only, you know, it looks like, you know, you're going to end up using a whole bunch of these strips because they're kind of short. Really, I think I used maybe five strips. So like one package of this stuff comes with two sheets of these strips and they're good sized. Like you can get, you know, I've got a couple more packages here I haven't even cracked into. I'm still in the very first one. And that includes, you know, making my samples for the retreat from a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I did something else with them not too long ago. So, you know, they're, they're really, you get a lot for the money and they, they go a long way. So just something to keep in mind. Okay. We're getting closer to the end here, but I did want to show you the whole process of, um, getting those pieces down around outside your, on the edge of your shaker, just because, you know, if you're new to these or you haven't really maybe done a shaped shaker before, um, they can be just a little bit intimidating and see, that's where I quit trimming. So that one was like stuck to the one next to it. Okay, so I'm only going to use part of this one. So I'm going to leave it attached to the carrier sheet bring it around and make sure when you're going from one piece to the next that you're butting those right up against each other so that there's not 
any kind of gap. Okay, so there is the foam on our shaker. And what I've got, so this was from Michael's. It was some Halloween glitter assortment. But this particular one, to me, did not look like Halloween. It looked like fall. It's got a glitter in there that is all these little fall leaves and like little pine cones and stuff. And they are so pretty. Um, I got it for half price like a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, at this point, if your Michaels has them, they're probably going to be even less than that. So, I mean, I think I paid $2 for four little, you know, this whole package that had four different little fall Halloween-y glitters. And I've got a couple other Halloween ones that I bought at the same time. But this one was probably my favorite. I bought a couple of these because I really liked those those leaves. So, okay, now I'm just pulling the backing off of the score tape. I'm sorry, not the score tape, the foam tape. And you can see as I pull that up where that, that tape is. A little bit more backing to go there, not a whole lot. And then we are going to carefully line this up and set this down on top of our shaker fill there on our back. And I could not get a hold of that one. I don't know why. It just, my nails are too long. That's part of my problem. But I wanted to keep my candy corn nails through Halloween. So I'm just suffering through too long fingernails right now. <laughs> That's okay. All right, so all the backing's off. I'm starting down at the bottom, and I'm lining up along the bottom. And once that is lined up, I know the rest of it is going to line up and lay down perfectly. Turning it over, pushing it down, just make sure everything's good and attached. And then I'm going to flip that back over. I'm going to take some green ink and a little blending brush. You could do it with a foam whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm just barely getting the edges of those leaves and kind of a little bit in the middle. Like I'm not like getting really crazy inking it, but I'm also not like, you know, I'm not like being careful about where it goes because I do want them to kind of have like, it just gives them some more dimension and, and depth. Um, I do want them to have a little bit of color there. So super easy. And there we go. So you're going to do this two times. So there's both of my shakers that go on the ends. And then we can move on to our banner pieces. Okay, so our banner pieces are going to be five by seven. You can get four five by seven pieces out of one 12 by 12. Putting this in the trimmer at with it over to five inches, I'm starting at seven inches and cutting down. I'm going to turn the whole sheet, quarter turn, go back to five inches, cut up to seven. Okay, turn it again. There's our first piece. Turn, put it down, cut seven inches again. Turn it one more time, line it up to five inches. And this one we can just cut all the way through because we've got just that little tiny square in the middle left and we've got our four five by seven pieces. I did the exact same thing with the lightweight chipboard and the acetate. So I have four pieces of lightweight chipboard that are five by seven. I have four pieces of acetate that are five by seven. I have my four patterned. And now we're gonna take some brown artisan and we're gonna cut this for our back pieces. And we're going to cut this. I actually cut it at seven and a half, cut it at eight. And you'll see why when I go to actually put the string on the banner, it needed to be longer, partially because the, the twine I end up using was kind of thick. But I'm going to cut this to five, do it five by eight. And then you're going to score all four of these. You're going to do this four times. You're going to score all of these 
at one inch. You're going to put the eight inch side at the top of your scoreboard. You're going to score these at one inch. And I know if you're like looking really close, I did cut these to seven and a half. Eight will, will work much, much better than the seven and a half did. Okay. And then I think I pull out the scoreboard here. Maybe I didn't. Oh, I might not have actually scored them on camera. You're going to score these with one inch at the... Oh, no, there it is. Okay. I was doing other things as I was doing this, which is why it's a voiceover, because it was not something I could turn the sound off on. Okay, you see I'm scoring this half an inch. Don't score it half an inch. Score it at one inch, because you will have cut these longer than what I cut. So it'll make it much easier on you when you go to actually assemble these. So just an FYI. Okay, we're going to set those aside. And I'm going to grab my chipboard pieces, I think. Yep, so there's chipboard. There's my frame I cut with the Cricut. You're going to put one of these on the back with that tab that will eventually fold over for your twine at the top. And I'm just going to glue this on the back side of that chipboard. And you could use heavyweight chipboard if you wanted to, since we're cutting this manually. Um, I just was using the lightweight because I've got quite a bit of it. So, And I can cut it with just my normal paper trimmer. So there we go. I'm going to smooth that down. I'm going to turn it over. And I'm make sure my tab's at the top. And I'm going to put down my pattern on the other side. Okay, you're going to do that to all of those chipboard pieces. Once you have that done, you're going to take your frame. I did cut those with the Cricut. They started out at 5 by 7. I then left a half inch border, so I cut 4 by 6 out of the center. So if you're not doing this with the Cricut, if you're, you know, going to do something different on your ends rather than having you know, the shape piece, or if you're just going to do this with just the four center pieces, um, if, you know, however you decide to do it, uh, it's a five by seven piece with a half inch border around for the frame. So I'm just putting score tape around this. I could have gone with the, um, the sticky dots again, but where I, like I said, I couldn't find my bigger sheets. I really didn't want to sit and, you know, do each side. So this, in this instance was easier. When it's those little tiny shaped pieces, it's another story. So I've got my acetate piece there and I'm going to get the backing off of my score tape. And it's like super sticky. I was really having an issue with it today. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. And then we're going to take our piece of acetate that is also five by seven. If you want to cut it a hair under, you can, but you can just cut it to five by seven. And if anything's sticking out, you can trim it with scissors after the fact. It will be fine. I'm going to line that up at the bottom. And then just very carefully roll that down that along that adhesive and push it down. And then there is that. Okay, now I'm going to grab my foam tape. Because I'm using sequins and kind of more of a glitter to fill these, I'm not doing, I'm only doing one layer of, of the foam tape because it doesn't need to be super high for those. Um, and because of how we're doing this banner, if some of it ends up kind of stuck I guess where you know it's not like all the shakers falling to the bottom and then when you shake it it goes everywhere if it you know kind of sticks it's fine because we're just doing this for some added interest and some um you know just something a little bit different to give it some depth um so it's not that big of a deal but when you are doing the foam tape you want to make sure you're going absolutely 
up to the edge of the piece next to it so that there's no gaps in your foam tape. Um, I did have black foam tape somewhere, but I've got about seven rolls of white that are about half gone laying around here, and I'm just trying to use those up before I open any new rolls, and my black is a new roll, so I'm not going to break my own new rule here and open that up just yet. <laughs> okay, so next we are going to apparently sit here for a second. I don't know what I got sidetracked with. Possibly looking for shaker fill. I'm honestly not sure. Okay, so those are good. I'm gonna bring our piece in, I'm just lining it up, making sure I like how it looks. A little late now because you know pattern paper's down, but that's okay. Um, we are going to leave the brown border on that frame as it is. It just helps to kind of break things up, um, you know, and and you know, yeah, break things up. That's what I'm trying to say. I know. Okay, so this gold sequins, I believe, are available in the Country Craft Creation Store. I will link them below. Um, these were my leftovers from the retreat a couple weeks ago. So I'm just going to pour some of those in the center of my banner piece. And I'm not getting too carried away, but... I am putting a generous amount in there just because, you know, it's going to get partially covered anyway, so a little more is probably better. And then I am actually adding in um, one of the other little glitters that was in that, and this is kind of like a rain brown with like kind of an iridescent shine to it, um, just for some extra color in there. Okay, so I'm going to get the backing off of my foam tape. Apparently I was off camera for that, didn't realize it, I apologize. But, you know, it's foam tape, you should know how to take the backing off at this point. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start at the bottom and line this up. And then lay it down. And you'll see how, like, the sequins and stuff are kind of jumping around in there. It's because it's staticky. I'm just tapping it on the side there. And you'll see how it's like sticking to the front. It's because it's staticky, which is fine, but alcohol will help with that. All right. Okay, so banner pieces are assembled. What we're going to do, so you had your little half inch tab, okay? You're going to fold that over. I lay them out the way they go, and then I flip them up. This way, they're in the right order so that you don't get this and ignore the messy back of that when I glued something on there that wasn't supposed to be there. So ignore that. <laughs> and then we'll put something on these in just a second. But for right now, okay. So all I'm going to do is lay my twine in there. And honestly, I'm debating if I want this twine or if I want something thinner, like baker's twine. Hmm. Because that's not... No, I think it's fine. Okay. So I'm folding that over, or I will be folding that over. So what I'm going to do is just get my glue on that tab, and lay that down, And then I'm just going to burnish that down with something. Um, and depending on how thick your twine is, and this is something that's much thicker than, I think this is, this is an older one I think I had from, Actually, I don't know where I had this one from, but it's older. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to hold that for a minute. It's going to take a second to dry. And if it's taking too long, or it doesn't seem like it's going to hold, 
stuff like mine staring at me right now. All I'm gonna do is find a scrap and some scissors, because apparently those have disappeared on me too. It doesn't even have to be like it doesn't even have to go all the way across. You just need something that's gonna help hold all of that down in place where you want it. So all I'm doing, taking a scrap, gluing it on that, which if you're using thinner baker's twine rather than this thicker stuff that I've got here, you won't have this problem. You can also increase the height of this piece from seven and a half to eight and give yourself one inch that's gonna fold over. And that would actually be probably the best way to get around this. Okay. So I'm going to go to the next one, and again with the glue, I'm going to tuck this in, fold this down, and it's not going to hold again, so I'm going to take another one of my other little scrap pieces here. And again, if you're using something thinner, or if you're even if you're using ribbon, you're not going to have this problem. Um, this was just what I happened to grab. Okay, and I'm putting these about mm, maybe two inches apart. doesn't have to be exact. You can space it however you want. If you want these spaced further apart, by all means, that's what you go ahead and do. On our last one here. Or for that matter, you could do this with score tape, because then it is going to grab immediately. You're not going to have to fight with it like I'm doing right now. Which, again, is because I'm using this heavier twine. If I were not using the heavy twine, there would be no problem. Okay. All right. So for the pumpkins. I just have a piece that is two inches by about three and a half, three and a three and three quarters, three and a half. And I'm going to put this on the back of the pumpkin with the folded side towards the top. I'm going to get this up towards the top there. I'm going to do this on both of these. And this is just so you have somewhere to attach your string, twine string, whatever it is you happen to be using. Okay, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to flip these so that they're upside down. Slide this over. Do one over here. And we're doing the exact same thing. And this is where I'm really thinking, yeah, the eight versus the seven would be easier because look how easy that went on. <laughs> So, don't be like me. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes, like, it happens. You go, oh, I'm going to try this because this might make this work better. And it does in theory, but it needs tweaking. And that's exactly what we're going on here. Okay. So, over and down. Reach all the way across I'm like an idiot and put the lid on the glue. All right, so let's turn this over. There is our banner. I think I might be seeing that. I think I just 
realized I didn't zoom back out. Eh, not too much, not by too much. Okay, so there's your banner. All right, as always, please hit like, hit subscribe, and ring the bell if you want to get notified every time I upload a new project. Um, everything material-wise for this will be linked in the description in the video. Um, and you can find me also on Instagram under Scrapping Under the Influence and also on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Bye.